welcome to TV on TV. I'm State Representative Tommy Vitolo. Today is Thursday, March 21st, and we have a great show for you today. We have Neil Wyshynski, candidate for moderator. Of course, the town elections are May 7th, that's a Tuesday. Polls are open 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., and this is the first of many shows where we're going to interview candidates. In fact, we're going to be doing Tuesday and Thursday shows each week because we have so many great townwide candidates we want to hear from before the election. Having said that, this race is a little bit different than the others because this race, the race for moderator, is one in which Neil Wyshynski is running unopposed, uh, whereas the other races coming up in the future weeks do have competitive races. And so your decision uh, on who you vote for is going to be much more important than in this race. Nevertheless, because moderator is such an important position, I felt it was really important to bring Neil Wyshynski on and chat with him about his vision uh, for the job. And so that interview recorded just a few days ago will appear in just a few minutes. But first, as always, we'll start with the news. The United States Congress may be headed toward a shutdown. Speaker Mike Johnson announced negotiators have a bipartisan framework, but they have yet to release the spending bill itself. Texas has asserted broad new authority to tackle illegal immigration, making the novel argument that the U.S. Constitution authorizes the state to defend itself against the influx of people crossing the border. Both the New Orleans-based Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals and the United States Supreme Court have weighed in this week. The current status, pending additional court action, is that Texas may not use state resources to enforce federal border security. President Biden signed an executive order for $200 million in spending to fund new research in women's health. The Massachusetts Department of Higher Education plans to elevate gaps in financial support including considering redesigning tuition reimbursement, grant, loan forgiveness, and tax programs. This review is meant to expand education access and improve affordability. The state Senate is expected to take up a bill today that would criminalize sharing sexually explicit images or videos of someone without their consent. The House passed a similar bill in early January. Governor Healy announced a plan to pardon all people convicted of simple marijuana possession in Massachusetts. The pardon would forgive all state court misdemeanor convictions for possession of marijuana before March 13, 2024. Brookline police are investigating a crash that left a car sideways on a set of stairs behind Temple Beth Zion on Friday. The town and the police union have agreed on a new contract that would significantly change how the department hires officers by removing Brookline police from the state's civil service system. Cheryl Ann's will be open for business this Friday. The bakery will be opening its doors for the first time since December 2021 when a fire shut down the bakery. Folks, that's the news for the week. Uh, I'm glad you're here watching me, State Representative Tommy Vitolo, here on TV on TV. What we're going to do now is flip over to the interview earlier this week, uh, pre-recorded with Neil Wyshynski, candidate for moderator. Stay tuned, and thanks for watching. And welcome back to TV on TV. As promised, this week our guest is candidate for moderator, Neil Wyshynski. Neil, thanks for coming on the show. Well, thanks for having me. Before we get into uh, what the heck a moderator is, uh, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about what you've been up to, uh, well, frankly, your whole life. <laughs> well, uh, I've, I've been in Brookline now for 40 years. Um, grew up in New York City. Uh, moved here uh, following my wife, who got a job up here. Uh, professionally, uh, I've worked in various aspects of uh, of uh, regulating the employment relationship for a number of federal agencies. But at the end, I I wound up in IT as uh, handling large uh, uh, databases 
and became in many uh, instances the government's uh, data expert on legal cases. So somehow I fell into that. Uh, so it was turned a hobby into a profession. And I still consult uh, to the federal, to an agency of the federal government. Um, I've been active in town affairs uh, for probably over 20 years. I joined the advisory committee uh, back around uh, the year 2000. The advisory committee is the town's finance committee. And then I got into town meeting and eventually um, I ran for and was elected to the uh, select board and served in that capacity on the select board uh, for what, six years. Uh, four of the six, uh, I was the chair of the select board. And that was a, did some very interesting things on the select board, um, including uh, guiding the town's rezoning for what's now the children's hospital site uh, uh, in Brookline Village. I led the uh, the effort to acquire which uh, Newberry College, which was initially unsuccessful, but in the end uh, we we were able to acquire one half of the campus. So that that was kind of my my my. Uh, I, I look at those two uh, projects as as my legacy. Uh, to the town. And since coming off the board, I came off the board in 2019, I served in town meeting again. Um, and for the last year, I, I've, I've kind of been out of it, uh, out of town, out of direct uh, uh, town involvement. Uh, I came off of town meeting and uh, now I'm looking to get back in, but as moderator. Once you think you're out, it reels you back in. <laughs> it's you know? it's funny. You know, one of the problems in 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 my life is I have trouble saying no when people approach me to do interesting stuff. So I look at the moderator as being very interesting and 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 it can be very impactful. Um, so uh, that's what I like to do: interesting, impactful stuff. Well, I'll tell you, um, I I've been watching. Brookline's moderator uh, for several years now, and you dang well better start liking saying no because I, hear <laughs> I know no an awful it's, lot. It's the, it's the it's the one job in government where at if you're doing the job right, you're going to piss everyone off at some point in time, <laughs> and I hope to do the job right. So there's well, going to be a lot of pissed off people. Well, I look forward to being upset at you as well. But why don't you start by um, telling us? Uh, what the heck the moderator does. Uh, and I know there's a lot of, of responsibilities. One is the most prominent for town meeting, but walk us through it a little bit so we have a sense for what we're talking about. So we'll we'll end at the town meeting piece because that's the most visible. Um, so some of the less visible things are making appointments, appointments to uh, various town committees. And the most impactful, well, two of them are perhaps the most impactful. So first, is the advisory committee. And the advisory committee is the town's finance committee, which is charged with studying and making recommendations on articles coming before a town meeting. Um, its most important role is to uh, present the town's budget. It's, it, it moves the town's budget, studies all the ins and outs of the town budget, gets into the nitty gritty, um, and then makes a recommendation to uh, town meeting. It's an it's an important committee. It's a hard working committee. It's a it's a big commitment of time and finding people uh, who are willing to put in that uh, uh, amount of time is uh, is difficult. It, and and it's perhaps one of the most uh, uh, difficult parts of the job is just finding people willing to put in that amount of time. Um, another committee that the moderator appoints is the Committee on Town Organizational Structure. Uh, that's a smaller committee that meets uh, much less frequently. It tends to be people. We in the past we have the the moderator has appointed folks who have been around town government in various capacities uh, in responsible positions. So. Um, ex-select board members, typically uh, ex-school committee members, uh, folks like that who who really know town government and 
their job too is to advise town meeting, but on matters of the town's organization. Then there's a, a, a less visible committee that that the moderator makes an appointment to, and that's the audit committee that that kind of oversees the town audit function. Um, there are other committees uh, that the moderator appoints uh, that come out of town meetings, uh, deliberations. Some warrant articles end with a referral to a moderator appointed committee. And there too, the moderator makes uh, uh, appointments uh, to those committees. And in all those appointments, um, as I get into them and, and I think about you know, how I'm going to uh, do that. I, I think for, for any of the committees, especially advisory, um, you, you, you need a combination of uh, balance, um, diversity, um, and, and diversity at kind of all aspects of diversity. You, you normally think about racial diversity or socioeconomic diversity, but it also has to be geographic diversity that, that all section, all, all parts of the town need to be represented um, on advisory. And, 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 and you need to bring political balance uh, to advisory. So um, I'll be looking for that. Um, and one of the mandates uh, with advisory is uh, there needs to be, there should be one per, at least one person from each precinct. And that's a challenge. Uh, uh, finding one town meeting member, it should be a town meeting member from each precinct to try and spread uh, uh, the, 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 the perspective uh, uh, throughout, throughout the whole town. Th those parts of the job are perhaps less visible than what actually happens at town meeting. Um, so let's talk about it. Let's talk about the sure. moderator's role with town meeting. You know what I didn't say in town meeting right. extends beyond right. that, I think. Tell us a little bit about that. And then we're going to get into, you know, your spin on all of this. But one last foundational question. Tell us about the moderator's role with respect to town meeting. So um with respect to town meeting, there's the visible part that's actually presiding over town meeting. And from a from the amount of time the moderator spends on the job, it's that's probably the least uh, of the amount of time. Um, most of the time is actually spent, I think, in preparation for town meeting. And, and there you get into matters of what's an appropriate amendment to a particular uh, warrant article. So uh, uh, when, when, when the warrant is published, the warrant is, think of the warrant as, as as the agenda, it's the initial table setting for what's going to happen at town meeting. Uh, as part of the process, uh, you know, folks, any any town meeting member can propose an amendment. And part of what the, the advisory committee does is study uh, uh, each each uh, 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 warrant article, uh, have public hearings, have a discussion, debate, and sometimes they propose amendments. And other town meeting members can propose amendments, and then the moderator has to consider whether or not those those amendments are within the scope uh, of 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 what can be uh, uh, permitted. Um, so that's 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 one aspect. Another aspect is organizing the debate. Um, uh, typically, uh, a, a debate, you know, a debate has 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 a it's kind of a natural life, so to speak. Uh, it has to start with a presentation of what what are we talking about, and then what are the what are the arguments for, what are the arguments against, questions, um, and 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 that debate has to be organized, um, and, uh, and and that's a key aspect of the uh, moderator's job. Um, and there's a lot of you know. Town meeting members who want to speak on a warrant article will approach the, the moderator requesting time to speak. And then the moderator has to kind of uh, uh, organize that with uh, making sure it's balanced between pro and con or or very, sometimes there's more than two positions. It depends on the, you know, 
It depends on the warrant article. And, and a key aspect of the moderator's job is making sure that one, uh, all, all sides of the debate have been heard, knowing when to accept a motion to terminate the debate, um, and then making sure that town meeting members uh, know what they're voting on um, and making sure that the progression of the vote of the voting is is the correct uh, progression. Um, one of the most, you know, it, it could be very frustrating if you're if, if a town meeting member is presented with a, a series of votes and uh, and, and they don't understand uh, uh, what's happening. And that and that's happened in the past. Um, and, and 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 it's an important piece of, of what the moderator does, making sure folks really understand uh, what they're doing. Well, and it's incumbent, of course, upon town meeting members to come prepared, both in the general sense, but also, frankly, be prepared to listen to the instructions right. of the moderator, because sometimes that doesn't quite happen and people get confused. And that's, you know, we there's a big room full of people, 255 elected town meeting members, and then uh, you know, eight others, yourself uh, as a moderator, one of them. Uh, so we talked about sort of the the scope and the flow, and you've got to kind of make sure that the debate is fair and that people are heard and feel heard and that the votes are kosher, right? Uh, if right. town meeting doesn't follow procedure, the attorney general could throw the whole thing out, right? So Or, so or a court for that matter. Yeah, That's right. We're, um, we're making law. And so we're talking in some ways about um, flow of information on the floor. But of course, uh, there's also a flow of information leading up to town meeting where town meeting members and others are trying to understand what right. what's at play, what's the possibilities, uh, how they can be prepared. Uh, are you thinking about uh, that process? And, and are there any changes you can imagine to sort of how the public and how town meeting members and how town staff are Receiving information, sharing information, heading into town meeting. Yes. And um, that's actually one of the things I've been spending a fair amount of time thinking about. Um, until until recently, uh, town meeting was really a paper-based uh, process. And as we got into the pandemic, um, th th I, I think that became less sustainable. Um, and also, uh, folks are more um, uh, willing uh, than than they were in the past to 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 get it to be all electronic. And, um, and there was even a warrant article passed a few years ago requiring that uh, uh, town meeting members opt in to paper. So when when that warrant article was passed. Um, I was looking at okay, what what was the town doing to to make that possible, and and what what they were doing at the time, and and continued to do until last year, and I'll talk about that in a second. In a second, was taking this combined report, which the combined report is the is is a report that has all of the all of the potential motions analysis recommendations from all the boards and commissions in one document and the town was combining this entire uh, a combined report of literally hundreds of pages into one giant pdf that you would then have to navigate and i saw that and that, that I, I i couldn't imagine how we could go to an all electronic town meeting if if that's the basis of how information is flowing and one of the things i did when i when i got out of town meeting and, and given that I, I i still have a lot of connections in the town in, in in town hall i prevailed upon them to to let me help them break that combined report up into pieces uh, uh, where now on, on the town website, it, each warrant article has its own place. And the combined report for that warrant article appears in that place 
on on the town website and to me that's kind of phase one um so what what's there now is 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 what comes out of the vetting process where uh, after after the warrant is published the advisory committee and other committees the planning board for zoning articles um the preservation commission for stuff for articles that affect them and all these other boards and commissions are going through and and having hearings and and none of that hits that central town meeting place on the website until the very end of the process. And what I'm hoping to do is have the town meeting uh, place on, on, in, on the town website, kind of a central clearinghouse uh, for information on, on what's happening with respect to warrant articles. Now it's gonna take some institutional change uh, for that to happen. And someone is going to have to um, kind of lead that process. And I'm hoping, oh, I'm, 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 I'm going to try to do that. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to take some time. It sounds easy, but it's not. It doesn't sound easy to me at all. I think about all the details, like when there are twin or triplet Warren articles, there's a single debate and multiple Warren articles, how do you lump them together? But maybe they won't stay lumped together if the debate goes in a different direction. There's all kinds of details. None of that would be ready for May, I presume. No, no, no. And and even, even I, I think we're going to have to approach it in phases. Um, and I haven't quite fleshed that out. And I'm hoping to put together uh, a work group to uh, help me uh, flesh that out. Uh, one thing... Um, um, one thing I've learned over time is that town meeting in the town is full of some really smart people who are willing to uh, volunteer and lend their expertise to the town. And it's this isn't something I have to be doing myself. It's something I can lead um, and hopefully bring some folks uh, with me to help think this thing through. Um, and then we also have to work within the constraints of uh, the town's resources. Um, and, and resources can be hardware, software, but it's also people because uh, we're going to need the IT uh, staff in the end to be implementing whatever we come up with. So we need to be working with the IT staff. Uh, but I think, you know, there's, there's some low hanging fruit. Uh, that we can bring in very quickly, like uh, stuff that happens in the advisory committee uh, is very well, you know, they have a very robust uh, uh, website, but it's not connected in any way to the to the central town meeting website. So to me, connecting what's happening at the advisory committee to the town meeting website is is low hanging fruit. So, you know, we can start there and and do the harder stuff later. Yeah, iterate, iterate. I want to I want to dial into voting a little bit. And I got a couple of different angles, so we're going to move fairly quickly through yep. them. Uh the moderator is a town meeting member and by statute is permitted to vote in town meeting. Now, in some town meetings, I don't mean fall versus spring, I mean in other municipalities, the moderator always votes. And at least one municipality that that I know of the moderator only votes to break ties. Right. Of course, a majority vote 50-50 loses at a two-thirds vote, two-thirds exactly passes. Uh, the tradition in Brookline, at least recently, has been that the moderator always abstains. Have you, do you have any thoughts about how you're going to cast your vote in different yeah. circumstances in town meeting? I think it, it, it's important for the uh, moderator to be neutral and to not only to appear neutral, but to be neutral on all all matters for town meeting. And I think the, the, one of the ways to do that is to just say, I'm not going to vote. Um, and um, that's been the tradition in Brookline and I don't see a reason to uh, change it. Um, so now let me poke in a little bit. You have a voting history I do. Recorded voting history I as do. a town meeting member, as an advisory committee member, as a select board member. 
I do. And so what, are there any guidelines that you'll follow on when, uh, not only will you not vote, but maybe uh, you'll hand the gavel to someone else for a particular warrant article, because for whatever reason, you feel you're just too close to the issue to be perceived as moderating it fairly. I, I, I can't come up with any examples where uh, if, if th there may have been an issue that I was involved in while on the select board, uh, may, maybe you know, maybe if there was a personnel issue or something like that, uh, that I was involved in, but I, I, I've been off the board long enough uh, not to not 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 to have that situation, but um, I I I can't imagine um, yeah just you know off the top of my head um, having a situation where a project or something uh, that I was involved in uh, while on the select board came before town meeting that I couldn't moderate um, uh, objectively, but. Um, if, if, if that becomes a problem, I'd be happy to recuse myself. Um, I'm going to continue, uh, the recent tradition of having assistant moderators. Uh, so there will always be someone to step in. I think that's, uh, one of the, uh, m most positive things that the, the, my, uh, my predecessor, my pre the predecessor of the of whoever's going to be elected um, uh, in May, um, I, I think that was a very successful uh, uh, innovation, um, and I and I will continue that. Um, you know, there are other situations. You know, what, what if I get sick or get hit by the proverbial bus? Uh, or there needs there's to be a warrant article that would govern what the moderator can and can't do. Right, Maybe. and right. and there were. Uh, uh, the town was fortunate to have a lot of stability in the, in the moderator role with uh, Sandy Gatsby, who was moderator for what, 27 years. Um, I, if I were elected, I, I, one thing I will commit to <laughs> is this will not be a 27 year gig for me. Um, that's a good bet. That's a good <laughs> bet. Um, I got one more for you on voting. Um, yeah. of course for, the first hundred years of town meeting or so, any recorded votes required ballots or a roll call. And this took a long time and it was very cumbersome. So there were very, very few recorded votes. And then under the leadership of several town meeting members, including now deceased town meeting member Frank Caro, there was a movement for recorded votes using technology and town meeting had these sort of little buttons. And while not only were the votes recorded, but while the votes were cast, town meeting could see how the vote was going and people could still change their mind. Right. Since then, uh, as a consequence of COVID, we're now at a four year anniversary uh, and moving to Zoom, of course the voting on Zoom, you, you see your choices, you hit your button and it says, thank you for voting. And then you see no information until the voting period is over and then you just get the result. Right. And uh, so have you given any thought to what the future of voting in town meeting will be, presumably in a hybrid fashion, where there are both people in the auditorium who can see a, a big screen in the front of the room, but also people on laptops or tablets or phones, uh, presumably at home. Any thoughts on a voting mechanism that brings this all together and sort of finds the best of all worlds? Yeah, I, I, I feel very strongly that the uh, the voting method where folks could see how people were voting uh, before the uh, the vote was called is is very useful and important. And uh, the, we stepped back from that just due to the using one particular uh, platform. Um, I one of the things I hope to be working on is going back. To, you can see the the, the votes uh, uh, while it's happening. Now I don't know, I don't know the platform we'd be using, and then having a hybrid adds a, adds its complexity to that. So whether we can find a platform that 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 will accommodate what I think is a requirement, um, I don't know. Maybe we have to write our own. Um, um, 
but that's something that uh, I'll, I'll commit to and uh, leading an investigation in, into how, how to get that done. And it certainly won't be done for May. Whether we can get it done for November, I don't know. Uh, if if it if it involves uh, money, then we would have to go through an appropriation process, so that could delay it. So uh, I, I I feel very strongly that uh, uh, we should go back to that way of doing things. Whether it's with a clicker or not, I, I don't know yet. Folks, Neil Wyshynski, candidate for moderator. We're out of time. The election, of course, is Tuesday, May 7th. Polls are open 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. There are loads of races on the ballot, some competitive, some not. Neil Wyshynski is running for moderator. Neil, thanks for coming on the show, and I wish you the best of luck. Thanks for having me. It was fun.